what it is to win and celebrate with these guys. And, uh, after all these years of coaching, that is by far the most fun for me. It's to be in that locker room after a game like that and, and celebrate. And um, it's nothing like it. You know, people talk about games that uh, I've heard the term meaningless bowl games. I mean, it just makes me mad when I hear that because I know how much it meant to us. If you're in that locker room, you'd have seen it. If you'd have been in practice every day, you would have seen it. And I'm uh, just really proud of our guys for just busting their tails for us and trusting us. Well, even in the game, started out sorry, and the defense is playing great, and the offense started sorry offensively. Um, you know, defense kind of started pointing fingers and getting mad and all that kind of thing. We just, just don't do that here. It starts with the coaches, and uh, the players follow suit. But, yeah, then we, then we get one, one big play to a mod, and I don't know if they made it or not, the kid pulled a hamstring about 10 days ago, or whatever it was, slightly pulled it. He hit, that's the first day he ran full speed, was right there. And so I'm glad his hamstring was, was healed. But uh, he hadn't practiced for a while now. But you know, one play kind of sparked the team, uh, offensively especially, and I think a couple of Brad get out of, uh, you know, he, he, just, he was just missing. Uh, some targets, uh, not quite on the money. Balls that were, may, have, may have been catchable, but not not the uh, the darts that I'm used to him see, seeing him throw. And then after that, he just he took off and uh, started drilling the ball. And I thought the uh, you know, the drive right before the half was huge. There's a lot of huge things, but excuse me, we uh, we really didn't have many one minute drills the whole season. There might have been one. I can't even remember. We might have started one and, and didn't get much out of the first play and then just took a knee or whatever we did. But that, that might have been the first one minute drive that we give it into the score. There may have been one or somewhere along the way. But and we really hadn't practiced in a while in a while because on Thursdays you tend to uh, it's a day I want to get their legs back and if I make them go full speed in that drill sometimes I'm worried about a hamstring or something like that. So just a great job by everybody doing that type of a one minute drive without really practicing a lot. We talked about it a lot, but we didn't practice at full speed really until tonight. And we haven't done that in process since mid-season. So anyway, I'm, I'm talking too much. I'll let you all ask whatever questions you want to ask and we'll go. Right, let's start with the Florida Griffith. Sorry, Carl. Carl came out to the AP. Can you recall the game and turn on the dime so quickly like that? And I, I know you guys kept staying with the same way then you get the one they went to the line. But right. I, obviously you had you had to be quite worried about the six five. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I don't know how many drives was it? Six. We had six drives? There was nothing. Yeah. Yeah, that was one first that was fun. <laughs> I'm shocked we had a first down in that uh, that mess. I, I think you gotta give a lot of credit to West Virginia, especially their front. Their down line and whooped us in the run game. I don't know if we ever really had a run that we just blocked everybody beautifully and we caught a crease and got to, you know, a nice positive game. You know, I think the only time that we might have had a long run was uh, when we might have bounced something that wasn't there, got stuffed and it bounced it, got some yards here and there. But I don't know if we really had a run, run play that we just knocked anybody off the ball and created a scene for a back. So, you know, you got to give West Virginia's defense their line and linebackers and their defense coaches credit. They, they did a great job of stoning us. And, and then, you know, thankfully we made a couple of plays throwing the ball and the dam kind of broke. Sure, sure. Um, coach, you mentioned before how they get one plus for you. How big is it to you personally knowing that it's your all honor? Right. And, you know, it means a lot. It means a lot. I love, I love this school. It, 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 it blessed me during my time here. It, it, Bless me more with life lessons probably than anything else. You know, being a backup to Jim Kelly, you know, one of the greatest players ever at Miami and in the NFL. And, uh, so I think the biggest lesson I learned is you don't always get what you think you earned. You know, we've got people who work hard and, and you think, well, I earned it. Well, I worked hard enough, but this other guy's better. It's life. You gotta learn that. You don't always get what you earned. You don't always get what you think you earned. You've got to learn to decide every day uh, what your attitude is going to be and how hard you're going to work. So I knew I could control how hard I work. I knew I could control my attitude. And then I trusted God with everything else after that. It just, it just was a good life lesson for me. 
one of those, you want to look for Space Coast Daily Coach. Uh, talk, as a former quarterback, what did you tell your quarterback after the first quarter of settling down? He wasn't hitting months, he was overthrowing receivers. How'd you settle him down? I just said, I, I just said, just let it rip. You know, just for all those BBs that I'm used to seeing in practice, just just, just let it rip. You know, put it on him. Because he, he's, he's one of the most accurate guys. You know, but sometimes he'll be, he, he understands that more games are lost than one. Okay, so he doesn't want to put the ball in jeopardy. So sometimes he's careful, maybe a little too careful at times. But then once he, he just kind of turned it loose and started drilling the ball in confidence, it was, it was over after that. He did a great job. Coach, Will Brown, footballbotnet.com. In each of your three previous games, you were a team man for less time than you lost the game. Um, so to do that tonight, if you would describe how the passing game made up for that uh, and was able to help you all win this game. Okay, so we ran for less than 100 yards. That's, yeah. Well, um, again, just guys making plays. Um, you know, we, I know the first touchdown, I don't think it was man coverage. I think it was a zone coverage. And uh, Amon just kind of hit, cut across the field and scored. And, the, the touchdown on the uh, one-minute drill, uh, I know it was man coverage. Uh, I know the Joker's touchdown was man coverage. Um, you know, so we, a lot of times, we, if you play us man-to-man, -man, we've got some pretty good skill guys that can, can hurt you if you get the ball to them. You know, a lot of times it's just a matter of protection. Can you protect the ball enough to get, you know, Kai a minute to sight it up and put it on them? You know, enough, that happened enough times where uh, we were able to take over the game, you know, throw the ball, but... It just wasn't wasn't pretty overall offensive performance, but we made enough plays to win it. Brian, Brian the second night the ticket coach. Could you just try to put in perspective? I know it just ended, but this season for you, your right. first in Miami, and had some ups and downs. Yeah, but no doubt. Finish out the right way. I wish we would have made an extra point earlier in the year. That'd been nice. <laughs> Who knows how things might have changed that? But you know, that's, that's part of life. We didn't get it done. You know, the games we lost were mostly in every one of them. Uh, the Virginia Tech game got away pretty much mid fourth quarter. We we had a chance to score, I think, get it in seven one time, and maybe five minutes to go in the game. We might have made it a game, but we didn't score, and then they did. They were up 14, went up 21, or whatever it was. But other than that, we, we were battling it every game, and we fought hard. We just we got to learn to win the close ones. And, um, uh, you know, so that will be important. But as far as... My perspective is, I mean, I do remember the first couple of days being in practice, bowl practice, and, and allowing the, lab, the the former staff to finish. They've done such a great job uh, at the end of the year last year. And I just got to kind of watch, get to meet the guys little by little. And, and I knew in time that, you know, I was going to fall in love with them, you know. You love them before you get to know them because that's just part of your job. But once you get to know their personalities and everything, and, uh, it's just... It, the relationships to me are, are very important. Um, strategy and competition kind of got me into coaching business, but the relationships with these guys is really the most important thing to me now, other than watching them jump in the locker room and win games and championships. I love that too, believe me. But I think um, it's, it's a, I don't know, I would call it more of a mission for me than a job. Remember to tell us your name in publication. <laughs> Speak about your receivers, uh, specifically uh, Coley, who uh, threw two big uh, blocks on uh, those scoring plays. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like your, all your receivers were all in to, uh, today with uh, run blocking. Yeah, we, you know, early on we didn't run block very well. Uh, even some of those little swing passes we throw out there, was, uh, we didn't block very well in the beginning. And then they, we started to sling them out there and we started to block a little better before you know we gained a lot of confidence. And of course, the one in the Joku. Uh, was just a uh, great job of Kaya seeing that normally in man cover we won't throw that ball to that receiver because the, the, the defender, if he's got a man to man, he can just take a B line to him. But they were trying to disguise the blitz so they were deep enough where Kaya knew if he ripped it out there, we had a chance. Then, then as you mentioned, Coley's out there in front of it, you know, finishing off his guy and uh, allowing the Joku to get in the end zone. And that's that's big, you know, we, we're big on receivers blocking, we're big on running backs blocking, you know, those guys just aren't running and pass catching specialists. 
But early on, early on I, I, I thought West Virginia was just whipping us. The first quarter is very evident. They, they just were more physical than us uh, up front and in the perimeter. And again, you know, we got the one play, we got more confidence, it energized the team, and we just started getting after them a little bit better. And I, you know, I don't know if fatigue set in with them or not, but a lot of times throughout the game, no matter how good a shape you're in, you're not going to be, you're not going to have the same stinger as you do for early in the game. Who's in charge of that? 